Hello again, welcome back to the kitchen table. Um, this evening, balancing the Rotopixel gimbal. This has seemed to gain a lot of interest from people. Um, so I thought I'd uh, I'd show you to it, I'll show you how to do it. Um, now this isn't gonna be official. This has not come from Rotopixel. This is not the way that they recommend to do it. This is just what I've found out through my research and how I think it's done. So, you know, disclaimer here, if it turns out to be wrong, don't blame me. Um, uh, this evening's uh, just throat loosener is uh, just in honour of all things Caribbean. Uh, is is a tot of um, rum distilled in the Caribbean? This one actually. So excuse me. <clears throat> oh yes. Right. So what I've done, um, for those of you who know my situation at home, it's been a day of back-to-back -back Disney. Uh, so I thought, well, I'll put those to good use and prop up the vision with the rose pixel on so you can see what I'm doing. Now, when I first looked into balancing a gimbal, I, I think along with a lot of other people, maybe it's just me, assumed that what they meant by balancing it was that when you have the power off, the gimbal hangs like that. And if you knock it, you know, it, it comes back. Actually, that's wrong. What you need to do is the equivalent of, I guess if you're diving, you want neutral buoyancy. So wherever, as a diver in the Caribbean, say, wherever you are, uh, whatever depth of water, if you just stop moving, you stay there. If you change again, you stay there. And it's the same with the gimbal. So what I've done is I've balanced this one and I'll show you how I did it. Uh, also, people have asked me about the change in design of the um, actual mount. So I'll show you that in a bit in a bit closer detail as well and how easy or otherwise it is to, to take the camera off for storage or putting in your flight case. So this is what a balanced gimbal should look like. It's not the fact that it, it's level with the power off, it's the fact that wherever I put it, it stays there with the power off. It's neutrally balanced. So we put it to the side, it stays that way. I put it that way though, it stays that way. I put it that way, it stays that way and so on and, I do that. And, it, and it stays put. What you don't want it to be doing is constantly going back to the middle. That's actually wrong. So there's a couple of adjustments that, um, that you make to do that and you use the smaller of the two Allen wrenches that was uh, provided to do those. Um, so let's have, a, let's have a bit of a look at the first adjustment. So at the back here, if I move the camera out of the way, you'll see where the roll servo is here, you've got this plate and there are four, one, two, three, four hex screws. If you undo those um, just, just enough, you'll see there's a slide, a slide here. And what you can then do, I'll come back the other way, what you can then do is move this here forwards and backwards. And you do that little movement nip it down just tight check until you get the um, the balance neutral on that roll axis so it stays as I said wherever you put it you don't want it coming back that's not right so when you've done that obviously and that's the easy one to do because you can do it with everything attached you just move the camera up out of the way get the key in the back and, and that's that's the easy one when you come to do the pitch one it's a little more tricky um, because you have to actually remove the um, the camera unit itself, make the adjustments, put it back on, check, take it out and tweak. So it's a little bit more involved, but we're, we're talking minutes really, that's all. So this is a good time, I think, to show you how the uh, how the, 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 the mount has changed from some of the prototypes. So as you can see, the first big change is that it's completely clear on this side. There's nothing at all here. There was a cutaway and there's actually very little now on the top, and then you can see the extent of it underneath. Um, and so what you need to do is there's now, for added safety, it's no longer just a pressure fit. It is a pressure fit, but there's also this little thumb screw here, which you can either just leave, out, leave in a bit or I'll just take it out of the way. There we go. And now what you would do is there's a very handy little, I did wonder what it was for when I got it. There's a little handy nose sort of piece here, which you can actually just use to put a little bit of 
I'm doing it awkwardly here from behind the camera. Pressure. Pop. It looked a bit more violent than it actually was. That's the camera out. Away it goes in your flight case, and this will obviously now just hang out the way. And is if you lift it up here, it's within the legs. Um, so if you've got a very expensive pre-molded case, that will still fit inside just like that. It's not going to get hung up on anything, and you can put the camera. In a, in a different part of the case or carry it separately or it might even squeeze in the back there but that but I just wanted to show people that that was easy and now what you can see you can't actually so I'm going to turn this around so what you can see now is that inside is a similar arrangement on this axis of one two three four screws and a sliding area so what you need to do is loosen them I leave one a very slight bit of tension change the balance slightly, nip down, put the camera back in, check, move, and so on. And what I found was useful to use um, was a little uh, pencil. And when you get what you think is just the right um, balance point, mark it along there with a pencil, pencil line because putting the camera back in is probably going to move those. If you've just got the perfect balance, and you know it's perfect and you want to take the camera out to readjust mark it first because in 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 the movement of taking the camera out you'll probably um you'll probably move it uh, away from the the balance point because you can't do one without the other so that's how you do that um pretty straightforward um you're after neutrality not going back to the center that was the thing that i learned um, and that's it really. I balance mine to take this circular polarizer. Um, people have asked, you know, what are the dots? What I what I did just for those who have got the lens filter kit. Um, I bought my cheap circ polarizer. Um, I screwed it on and then I found a point where it was on. Dabbed a bit of white paint, took it off, held it up to a to the light and then turned until I got the maximum polarization line that up with there, put another dab, and now I know that whenever I take it out of the case, if I just line those, once I've got it on, line those two up, and I've got my max circularization. Uh, sorry, max polarization. But anyway, that's it. Um, I hope that's been useful. Um, that's balancing the gimbal, as far as I'm aware, and also um, a demonstration that it is, it's pretty quick release, isn't it, to take off. So if you were concerned about having to sort of, you know, chop up an expensive flight case, don't be, because that's tucked out of the way there, um, is going to be within the confines of the existing landing legs, so as long as you've got a space in the middle. There you go. So um, enjoy your gimbals if you've got them. Um, I hope you still think it's worth the patient wait if you haven't. And um, you know that's how I think you should balance it. Um, I will await the to pixel to shoot me down in flames if I've got it wrong, but um, I apologise if I have. But I, I think that's it. So thanks again for watching. Thank you again for some more of your, your um, good wishes for, for, for little Rosie. And um, I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.